you know, if you don't want to, if you, if you can't do the devotional tonight, let me know, you know, it's okay if you push the time. And I started to say, well, no, I'm not going to do it. But the Holy Spirit is saying, no, do this. So this is for somebody tonight. Amen. It was for me, but it's for somebody tonight. So if you turn with me into your Bible, to Isaiah chapter 14. And we're going to do verse 13. Amen. Amen. So, um, most of you all know that that's my son, John, that's always looking out behind in the, in, in the sound booth back there. Let's just make him feel real funny and everybody turn around and stare at him. Hey, John. <laughs> Amen. So, John will be leaving and going back to Atlanta to Morehouse on Tuesday at 11. And the closer it gets for him to take his, get on the flight, you know, it's a mommy thing, like, I'm like, oh, Lord, he got to go. I don't get to I haven't had enough time. I wonder what he's doing. And I, and I had a, a moment to just sit down and talk with him, and I said, oh, John, I just don't want you to be out there hungry. And he looked at me like, oh, I'm never going to go hungry. But you know, that's how stuff we worry about as mothers. Fathers worry about their kids, too. Yeah. But mothers. Yes. But Isaiah 54 and 13 says it. And thy children shall be taught of the Lord, and great shall be the peace of thy children. Amen. 54 and 13. Amen. Now, I, I've been blessed. I don't, I don't mean to brag, or I don't want to sound braggadocious, but I just think it's worth highlighting that God has blessed me with two wonderful children Amen. in my life. Amen. Amen. Both of them <laughs> They, they, they are, they're just like, to be 20 and 21, I think about myself when I was 20 and 21, I was such a knucklehead, you know, it's like, they are zoomed in on the future, they have plans, uh, Kelsey has like, she has accomplished things that women twice her age hadn't accomplished yet, and she's just like, full force ahead, and I just bless God for, for all, all the things that she's doing, and, and he's just in school, and he could be doing a lot of other things, but, you know, he's faithful in school, and I just bless God for that. But, despite of all those good things, I still find myself worrying sometimes. Come on. And I worry about these kids, and, and, I, and I talk to my husband, and I say, you know, I think sometimes we worry more than they do. Thank you. We worry about their problems more than they worry about their problems. Amen. But as believers, when we worry about our children, we're wasting time. Come on. Come on. We're wasting time on. worrying about Amen. worrying about our believers. You see, the minute we discern that the enemy is trying to get a foothold in our children's life, uh -huh. it's time for us to tear to him with the word of God. Amen. I mean, it's time for us to declare war on him. So like I said when I started talking about this. This is for somebody tonight. Amen. So if you've been in here, you've been worrying about your child or your children, you've been worrying what they're doing or who they're hanging with, who they're talking to, they're not listening to me, then this word is for you because God is saying, stop worrying and start declaring. I want this to be your last night that you stay up and you're worrying Hallelujah. about those kids Hallelujah. and you're wasting time worrying when you should Hallelujah. be praying and declaring Amen. over their lives. Amen. And I'm talking to somebody. Amen. Amen. I'm talking about declaring like, I'm talking about grabbing you some scriptures and holding on to it. Like, Jeremiah 29 11 saying, Thank you, God, that you said in your word that you know the plans that you have for my child. And those plans yeah. are plans for them to prosper yeah. and not to harm them. It's plans that give them a hope and a future. Yeah. I'm talking about declaring and saying, I declare by the word of the living God that you, my child, will grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Yes. According to 2 Peter 3 and 3 and 10. Amen. Or I'm talking about Psalms 121, 5 and 6 that said, It is the Lord Himself who watches over you. The Lord stands beside you, beside you as your protective shade. Even the sun, the word work out says, even the sun will not harm your children by day, nor the moon by night. Amen. These are the scriptures that we have to stand on Amen. when we when we feel like our kids are headed for trouble. Amen. I'm telling you tonight, don't waste another minute worrying about your children. Amen. Get the word working in their lives. Amen. Find out the enemy and his 
the right to Come stand on. up and tell them flat footed, you cannot have my child. Come on, Therefore, first lady. You cannot have my child. Hey. Hey. My child. And then what I want you to do, I want you to follow Matthew 9 and 38. And it says, Pray ye therefore, the Lord of harvest, that he will send forth laborers in Come the field on. who Come will on. your children. Come on. You may feel like your children are not listening to you. You may feel like you can't get through them. But when you start declaring the word of God over their life, God will send someone. He knows who is they will listen to. Yeah. He will put them right there in their path. Yeah. He will send them, and your child, your children will be saved and will be taken care of. So Amen. what are y'all saying tonight? Stop worrying and start declaring. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Put hands together for Stop worrying. Yes. Stop worrying. Yeah. Start declaring. Yeah. Yeah. Stop worrying. Start declaring. Come on, stand up on your feet. Where are your bodies? Can you guys come talk to me? Amen. Hallelujah. We still do this? Hallelujah. Now we still do it. I do it every single day. Whoa! Amen. Amen. I do it every day, whoa. Amen. Come on, declare out loud with me. I am fear and not flesh. Therefore, today, I shall dominate. Be victorious and increase in every area. My family shall be protected. My children shall be saved. My marriage shall prosper. And my finances shall increase. Today, I shall walk in my true identity, my spirit, and not my flesh. I shall control my tongue and my mind, regardless of how I feel. The word of God coming out of my mouth is just as powerful as the word of God coming out of his mouth. And the joy of the Lord is my strength, and I refuse to let anybody or anything pull me down this day, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Woo, that's my walk right there. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's my walk right. Ephesians chapter, chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 18. Come on, turn down. We've been teaching on this series. We started last Sunday. We started teaching on this series. with Sunday. I'm, boy, that was a good way to start off. Mm-hmm. Amen. That word was good. Yes, that word was good. Amen. When the light bulb goes off. And it's a series that we have a subtitle for it. Developing the right understanding. Developing the right understanding. You don't mind if I relax a little bit. No, sir. And, and, and jump off then. Amen. Glory to God. So, so. We, it's a series where God is raising our understanding to match where he's placed us, where he's, where he's called us to be seated. We're going to discuss that a little bit tonight. Come on, say developing the right understanding. Developing the right understanding. Tonight we're going to talk about getting on the same page. Getting on the same page. Put that down as part two that we'll be talking about. Last Sunday we talked about the infected confidence stuff has gotten in, in your confidence, infecting your confidence, causing you to operate from a place of uh, 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 infected confidence from bad understanding. Bad understanding causes you to operate with infected confidence. Favor is on your life. This is a statement that I made Sunday. Favor is on your life, but favor will not manifest without your confidence being involved. Your level of confidence has to be involved in order for favor to f- fully flourish and manifest in your life in a great way. And that's what God is working. God is working to raise your understanding, to build your confidence so that you'll be a co-laborer with him. Now, now we're going to pick up where we left off Sunday. And, and Sunday, we talked about that word understanding. We're not going to pull it up on the screen, but we'll go ahead over the definition once again. Number one, understanding meant to comprehend and envision. It meant to comprehend and envision. That's what understanding meant. It meant that someone would say something to you And then you would then have a moment where the light bulb would go off and say, okay, I see what you're saying. That's understanding. That's the first definition of understanding. It is is to have that moment done where somebody says something to you. Based on the words that are spoken, you get a picture of it. Amen. Amen. Now, the problem has been this with the body of Christ. God has been speaking a certain set of words. And the picture we have don't match the words he said. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Jesus. Somebody say bad understanding. Bad understanding. I told you, you can't sit way back there now. Amen. Oh. Glory to God. You can't sit way back there now. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. So that, 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 that the picture, the words that God is saying, he's looking for you to get an image on the inside of you to envision what God is saying, what God is saying 
based on what he said to get a picture of that. Amen. Somebody say understanding. Understanding. The second definition of understanding was to be conscious. That's just, I mean, that's just uh, uh, paraphrasing it, uh, shortening it up a little bit. And actually, the definition was to be conscious of a thing. But to be conscious and understanding is to be conscious, to constantly think about, to have it on your mind, to have it on your mind. That's understanding, to be conscious of. Um, and then you can begin to solve problems with that when you formulas are built on understanding. You remember when you was in school and they had that um that they had that that, that, that simple um, formula when it was three plus x equals five. Yes. And you remember sitting at the kitchen table. I'm talking about it, and, and your, your mom was sitting there. Your mom was like me, and she just said it over and over. Three plus x equals five. Yes, sir. Three <laughs> plus x equals five. And I mean, if you do that too long, you will get the x whooped. Out of you, you're gonna find out what it is. <laughs> you're gonna find out what it is in a minute when, when, when I said three plus x equals five. Now, when you get older, you go back and you look at that, it was like, oh, the formula was simple. It would just subtract uh, the three from the five, and I'm gonna find out what the x is. See, it was a problem when I didn't know the formula. When I didn't have the understanding, it was a problem. Some of the stuff you call problems are only problems because you don't have the understanding of the formula. Come on. It wouldn't even be a problem. The some of the stuff you worry about at night, you, you will stay up late at night and you can't sleep behind is because you don't know what the X is. And if you just learn to form, have an understanding of it, then you would it wouldn't be a problem. Somebody say comprehend. Comprehend. Envision. Envision. Be conscious. Be conscious. The next definition was to accurately process, to assess and process. Uh, on the screen it said access, but it meant assess, to assess and process. It's me looking at a situation, realizing what the situation, how it is going, and I believe we use the illustration that most people are not realizing that this is not a beneficial relationship, that it's not a God or that relationship until after we get in the relationship. And that means our understanding is behind. Because God is trying to get us to look at it, discern that this ain't gonna be good for me, and I don't even see I don't have to learn. See, experience is a good teacher, but it's not the best teacher. We say that. We say experience is the best teacher. But if the experience is the best teacher, the Holy Ghost is a teacher. So if the experience is the best teacher, then we crown the experience to be a better teacher than the Holy Ghost. And some of the stuff the Holy Ghost is trying to get us to have an understanding about without having to go in. Right. Amen. 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 There are some things I've been through in life. I'm telling you, I learned from them. I learned from them. Glory to God. I thank God for them. I learned. They were not losses in my life. They were learning opportunities. Amen. But these are the same things that my kids will not have to go through. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. I, I mean, my kids will not. Anybody feel like that? There are some things that I learned from, but my kids will not have to go through that to learn that. Amen. Glory to God. That I'll be. I, I, I would now listen to the Holy Ghost to be able to teach them, and I do what first lady said. I trust people to come in their path that are depositing them, so they won't have to go through that to learn that lesson. Amen. 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 Now, the next definition um, for for understanding we defined it as this was a uh, 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 J B Young. Amen. Um, dictionary. Uh, amen. He's saying you got your own dictionary. Well, the Holy Ghost gave me the definition for understanding. We, we trust Webster. Yes, we do. Don't even know it. We trust Webster. We trust we, tr we, tr we, we trust Webster's definition. Amen. So I can give you my definition for understanding. It's simple. It, it means to stand under. Come on. Understanding means to stand under. It's the information that governs our lives. Amen. I, I meant to have an umbrella. Um, to bring in um, so that I can open it up and, and show you that it's the thing that's over you everywhere you go. I don't care what relationship you go in, that understanding go with you. And you can only live under the understanding that you have. Amen. You can only live under, you can only, I don't care what job you go through. They didn't like me at the job. They didn't like me at their job. They didn't like, they didn't like you at the last five jobs. It might be the umbrella. Under my umbrella. Right, uh, yes. uh, it might be that. It might be the understanding that you're walking in and you're bringing that everywhere you go. So now, even when you get saved, God saves you. And the scripture says this here, that he translates us into the kingdom of his dear son. Now, I'm not trying to get all worked up tonight. So y'all have to work with me at this mellow tone that I am. I'm chilling. Amen. Glory to God. So you have to work with me right now. Look at Mama Rose. Can you work with me like this, Mama Rose? Amen. Glory to God. So now, watch you. God translates you from the kingdom of darkness into his kingdom. 
But if your understanding don't change, you brought an umbrella from over there over here. Yeah. So you saved on your way to heaven, living under principles that didn't come from this kingdom. Come on. Come on. Thinking with thoughts that didn't come from this kingdom. And all of that is the definition of understanding. Now in 2 Samuel chapter 5, verse 12, I got a number of scriptures to go to, so let's go fast. Go fast. Oh, I didn't read the Ephesians scripture. Let's go there. Ephesians chapter 1. This will be our foundation scripture, verse 18. Ephesians 1 and 18, you gotta say who there it is. Watch what it says in verse 18. The eyes of your understanding, this is Paul praying for the church at Ephesus. This should be your prayer for your spouse. This should be your prayer for yourself. This should be your prayer for your kids. This should be your prayer for your church. This should be your prayer for your family members. This should be your prayer. Watch what he said. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened. That you may know what is the hope of the call of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance. Where? In the saints. Now listen, he has a treasure. He buried that treasure. Just like an old treasure map. He's buried that treasure. But that buried treasure is in the saints. Amen. He buried his treasure, his inheritance. That's what the scripture says. It's his inheritance in the saints. Amen. Come on. His stuff in you. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. Come on, this is what the word say. Come on, say that's what the word say. You can't argue with the word if you see it right there in the scripture. His stuff in me. Come on, get personal with it. Come on, his stuff, his stuff in, me. in me. In me. And watch what Paul said. Paul said, I'm praying that the eyes of your understanding, I'm praying a light bulb goes off, that you will finally begin to realize what he called you to, and then realize that his stuff is already in you. Look at somebody say when the light bulb go off. See, when the light bulb go off, you won't be looking for it. You won't be trying. You won't even be worried about the government shut down no more. Because you'll be out of the tax bracket that will be looking for income tax. You'll be yeah. out of that then. Yeah. You'll be out of that. I mean, I pay taxes now. Yeah. That's what you think. I pay taxes now. Why? Because I've now begun to invest. I've now begun to seek after opportunity. And the light bulb went off to say, hold on, I don't have to settle for this. Amen. I now can expect of God and God can begin to supply according to their expectation. Amen. Your expectation is a launching pad for God. It's not what God is going to, it's not what God is going to stay at. It is what God is going to start at. Come on. Yes. It says, now unto him that is able to do exceeding, abundantly, above, 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 all that we can ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. Listen, it's already in us. I told you the power is already there. You're waiting on something outside of you to give you the power to deal with something outside of you. No, the power is already in you. Now, when you agree with that power, it'll become God's launching pad for your life. Yeah. Amen. Somebody say amen. 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 So he says, that I'm praying, Paul said, I'm praying that a light bulb go off. I'm praying that the light bulb of you seeing your true value go off. I'm praying that the light bulb that you begin to see yourself in the image and the likeness of God go off. Spiritual low self-esteem will be driven out of the church. The church won't be walking around talking about we're filthy, no good sinners, handmade, burden bound. No, we won't be talking like that no more. Why? Because we would drive that kind of thinking out of the church. And now God can get the most out of us because our understanding is being raised. Are y'all with me right now? Now, I said I was going to be chilling, so it was 2 second, second Samuel chapter 5. 2 Samuel chapter 5. I said we were going to be chilling, but amen. Glory to God. Amen. Pastor Rose, Pastor Michael Rose used to say it this way. I feel my hip coming on. Come on, man. Amen. Glory to God. That's how he used to say it. Amen. I feel all right now, church. Come on. Amen. Glory to God. That's what he used to say. Amen. Chapter 5, verse 12. 2 Samuel chapter 5, verse 12. Watch what it says. Now, now we talked about this Sunday, so I'm just backtracking for a second. How David is anointed king. He's anointed. Let me get the scriptures for you so you can write them down right quick. In 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 13, David is anointed king. Yes, sir. Nobody believed in David. Samuel showed up to anoint David's son. I mean, uh, 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 Jesse's son. Thank you so much. Jesse's son. He come to anoint Jesse's sons. And when he get there with Jesse's sons, he's, he's pouring the oil, but the oil won't flow. Whoever the oil flow on, that's who God is calling to be king. So he's holding the oil over the head and it won't flow out. So, and then he turns to him and he said, you got to have another boy. And this all your kids. He said, oh yeah, I got a boy I forgot about. See, God will anoint the one everybody else overlooks. 
Everyone else, everyone, the one everyone else forgot about, that would be the one God would anoint. So Samuel go out there in the field and the oil flow on David, the little, little, little rooted boy right there, the little run of the family. They pour, 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 pour the oil on him. He's anointed to be king. Thirteen years or so later, we find over there, write the scripture down, we find over there in, in 2 Samuel chapter 5, verse 3 through 4, David is appointed king. There's a period from him being anointed and him being appointed. Let me say this. You have to wait on both of them, not one of them. You have to wait on both of them, not one of them. Amen. There are some things that God has anointed you for that he hadn't ordained the time for it yet. Or he's ordained the time, but he hadn't released the time for it yet. Let me say it that way. He's anointed you for You got to wait on both of them. You can't get anointed and take off running. Amen. That's why we got a bunch of churches just all around. I'm not saying nothing's wrong with having church. I believe we need all the churches that we have, but we got a bunch of churches and some people just took off. Just because they had the anointing. You got to wait on the appointing. You have to wait on the appointing. You have to wait on the timing or what you're going to do, you're going to misuse the anointing. Amen. You're going to let the anointing take you somewhere that your character can't keep you. So you have to wait on both of them. Somebody say both of them. Both of them. That's the anointing and the appointing. So watch this. Now he's anointed, he's appointed, and David is finally sitting on the throne. He finally sits down. We're in verse 12. Watch what it says in verse 12. And David perceived that the Lord has established him king over Israel, and that he had exalted his kingdom for his people, Israel's sake. Listen to what happened. He's already anointed. Somebody say confirmation. confirmation. He's already appointed. Somebody say confirmation. confirmation. Now he has all of these witnesses that work with him to understand that I'm king. But he still don't get it. He's in the position, in the seat, and he still don't get it. Anointed, appointed, and still don't get it. Until one day he's looking around and the Bible says he perceives. The light bulb. Somebody said the light bulb went off. So you need the light bulb to go off. See, yeah. let me tell you what God is saying right now. God is saying, I've done something in you that I did with David, but I did it in Christ. I gave you a seat. The scripture said that now we are seated with him in heavenly places. So now we have a seat, a throne that we're sitting in in Christ. We're seated with him far above dominion. I mean, all principalities and all power and all dominion that is here and that is to come. We're seated above that. And watch what happened. The light bulb still ain't go off yet. David all of a sudden looked around and said, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. This is what I am? Yeah. Okay. Oh, I remember the moments. I remember those moments when all of a sudden it hit me and I began to realize, oh, that's what I am. That's what God created me, me to be. That's what God, I mean, to my, it just happens, those moments. I remember one time I was sitting down, um, this might have been 1997, somewhere off in that 97. I'm sitting down, and it's like 5 o'clock in the morning, I'm outside, and the Lord says this. The Lord says, tell me what you want, anything. He just speaking to me, very uh, uh, whispered to me very, very lightly. He said, tell me what you want, anything. Call me out God. I knew it was the Lord, but when he did it, it was a plane. There was, there was, there was, there was an asterisk behind, uh, uh, behind a riverbank. Amen. Glory to God. That was, that was my exile days there. Amen. Glory to God. For your, those of you who don't know my exile days, it was my exile. It was a, it was a, a, a asterisk. Amen. Glory to God. Y'all might say, when well, you make reference of those moments, I don't ever forget where I come from. Amen. And I don't ever stay where I come from. I just remember it, and I know where I'm going. Amen. Glory to God. And we in the exile, and I was sitting out there, and the Lord said, tell me what you want, anything. And I looked, and that plane just landed on that strip like that. I said, I want a plane. Amen. Glory to God. Now, you might be waiting on the rest of the story, amen, when he said, when, when did you get the plane, Bishop? Amen. To be continued. <laughs> but it was at that moment that I realized that I wasn't what the state said I was. Amen. That's right. It was at that moment that it, it hit me. Amen. Glory to God. Now I'm in there. I mean, I'm talking about DOC number and everything. 390562 is the number. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. And, and I'm in there. They stamped me with a number, moving me from facility to facility, and all of a sudden it just hit me. You're not a prisoner. 
I want to pray. See, the way that I'm thinking has started way back then. Man. Glory to God. Yeah. 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 You got lost in the fact of where I come from. Amen. Glory to God. Ain't nobody brought up your club days and your oh, brown days. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, that is oh, so you can go with one hand. Come on. Come on. We ain't bring up your days, so don't talk about mine. Right. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Glory to God. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Somebody say, that's my pastor. That's my pastor. Yeah. Amen. Glory to God. But the light bulb went off, and, and most, most, most believers are struggling because the light bulb hasn't come on. Where they sit and how they think don't match. Glory to God, that's good right now. Yeah, it is. Most believers are struggling because where you sit and how you think don't match. Yep. So we have to get how you think to match where you sit. Things all the ghost. Write down this first point. I, only, I, only got, I, got, I got a number of scriptures, but I only got a couple of points. Amen. We got to get on the same page. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Glory to God. Give me a second. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Glory to God. Will you pray that from the first lady? Amen. Glory to God. Write down this first point. Amen. Glory to God. You ain't got to go. Leave it there. Leave it there. Leave it there. Leave it there. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. I like looking at you. Amen. Don't worry about that. Amen. <laughs> you write it down. I tell it to you. We go old school with it. Amen. Glory to God. Everything I do is from, from my place of understanding. Everything that I do is from my place of understanding. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. In fact, Lance, Lance he's an IT guy. Will you be able to check and see if it pop up or something pop on the screen or something like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah just, 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 if it's no pop up, don't worry about it. Amen. But it might be the case. Amen. Everything I do, come on, come on, write it down. Everything I do is from my place of understanding. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. That's what it was. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. See, I said Lance. Amen. 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 I don't like looking at him like the way I'm looking at him. You know? <laughs> Amen. Glory to God. It's all right, Lance. Take a seat, buddy. Amen. Hallelujah. Hey, I'm sure she, 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 she said different. Amen. Glory yes, to God. It ain't your sermon, ma'am. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Glory to God. Go ahead right now. Everything I do is my place. It's from my place of understanding. Now, I know what you like to think. You like to think, okay, I do it. I do it. Everything I do is because the word tells me to do it. You don't do because of the word, you're not living the word. You're actually living your understanding of it. That's right. Good. Come on, now. Amen. That's correct. You ain't never seen. I remember one time we went to go buy a church in Evelyn Old Ball. We went down there to uh, um, well, South Baton Rouge. We walked around in this big, nice church. We ain't gonna call out the church or the denomination. And they moving. They moving to a bigger <laughs> church. And everything. They got this church for sale, and they had it for sale for a while. That me and Pastor Robinson. We were Nice said, okay, all right, yeah. Well, how much you want for? And they wouldn't sell us the church. They wouldn't sell us the church because the women that came with us had on pants. Well, nah, come on. Amen. And listen, and they thought they were right for that. Yes. If you ask him, they'll say, I'm living the word. Amen. No, you're living your understanding of the word. That's right. So we need God to, to fix that. Or you're going to keep shutting people out of your life. To this day, now that was, that was back when, that was probably about like 10 years ago or something like that. Amen. Well, that church still vacant now. Amen. Wow. Oh, and nobody's ever moved back in. Amen. Glory to God. I'm not saying that because I, I want to stay vacant. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. But they have to give it to me now. Amen. Ain't buying me now. Amen. <laughs> Hand that to me. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Glory to God. Everything I do is from my place. Come on, read it back to me. Everything I do is from my place of understanding. I pray, I praise, I worship, I think, I speak, I deal with others, all from this place of understanding. Everything I do, watch this. If you, most people that speak down on other people don't like themselves. So, so because of how they see themselves, their place of understanding, they begin to attack other people. Do you see it? The interaction right there. So most people don't think they should worship because they don't understand how the blood works for them. So now they don't even try to lift their hands or anything like that. So I think, I praise, I worship, I speak, I deal with others, all from this place of understanding. Now listen to me very quickly. Clearly, Adam was created to know God in the most intimate way. And God had no problem with that. Hallelujah. Listen to what I just said, Alicia. 
Adam was created to know God in the most intimate way, and God didn't have an issue with that. Church folk have an issue with that. You can't know him like that. You can't be like him. You can't do that. Adam was to know God in the most intimate way, and God was okay with that. We've been living our life to make sure that the people are okay with how we think. When God is not okay with that mindset. We've turned the ministry from a saving ministry into a social ministry. I want you to like me. I want you to like what I say. I want you to embrace me. When Jesus said over 30 times, and I'm talking about 30 times in, 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 in one set of books, amen, in Matthew, through the gospel, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, uh, the world hate me. The world hate me. The world hate me. Our understanding is not, 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 not on the same page with his. He said, listen, dog, my understanding was this. The world ain't going to want me with the way I think. Your understanding is this. Why the world don't want me? They should want me. Well, no, we're not on the same page. We have to get you on the same page. So let's, let's, let's teach a little bit. Turn to Ephesians chapter 4. Adam was created to know God. Ephesians chapter 4. Turn up. Adam was created to know God in the most intimate way. And God had no problem with that. When Adam fell, his understanding crumbled. His understanding crumbled. Come on, Ephesians chapter 4. I believe it's verse 17. If you got it, say, I got it. Watch what he says in verse 17. Now, I need you to pay attention to this. Watch what he says. This is what he says. This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord, that you henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk, in the vanity of their mind. He said, I don't want you to be living like people who don't have the Holy Ghost and people who are not in covenant with God. I don't want you to live like you don't have a covenant. I don't want you to live like you're not saved. I don't want you to live like you're not filled. I don't want you to live like you don't have an inheritance. I don't want you to live like other Gentiles. So watch this. Verse 18. Having the understanding, what? Darkened. Darken. See, the light bulb. He said, they're living with dark understanding. They don't have a light bulb that it went off yet. I don't want you living like that. Let's keep reading. Being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart, who being past feeling had given themselves over to lasciviousness to work all uncleanness with greediness. Watch what this is saying. This is what it's saying. My understanding controls my walk. That's what he says first, that you don't walk like the other one. So once my understanding is raised, my walk changes. We've been doing it wrong in the church. We've been trying to get people to live better without changing their understanding. Amen. So we've been telling them to stop a lot of stuff, but we haven't told them how to start thinking. Come on. Yeah, man. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> Glory to God. That's good right there, y'all. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Glory to God. Don't wait until we get on the word network and everybody in the world no. thinks this stuff good. Amen. Yeah. Glory to God. Listen to what I'm saying. Listen to what I'm saying. God is saying, if I raise your understanding, then I can now raise the way you walk. Amen. You, you walk according to the level of your understanding. You live in love. I wish above all things that you will prosper and be in health. But uh, according to or simultaneous with or even as your soul prospers. So as your understanding is, that's how you're going to experience the prosperity or the fruitfulness in your life. Come on now. Yes. Amen. So your understanding controls your walk. Watch what he said. Your understanding controls your walk. Then it determines the fellowship. It don't determine the relationship. I'm a son of God. I'm a son of God. But watch what he said in verse 18. Having their understanding darkened, darkened, being alienated from the life of God. I have it. I'm just separated from it. I can't fellowship with it. Because my understanding won't let me walk in. Glory to God. Watch what understanding does. It also determines the fellowship and it also heightens my awareness. Watch this here. Verse 19. Who being past feeling. See, all this happens when my understanding goes down or goes up. When my understanding goes up. Now, listen, I'm not saying you're never going to make another mistake in your life. What I'm saying is you're not going to be able to stay in it. That's right. That's right. Amen. Amen. Come on, how many of you remember those days when you used to be able to do whatever you want to do and sleep well at night? Whoa, God. <laughs> What no tossing and turning when they're getting up and everything? You can flash out and cut people out. You can tear down right there in the middle of the street and sleep like a baby. Yes, sir. Come on, talk to me. How many of y'all remember the baby? Can't do it now. 
You can't do it now. I'm not saying you can't flash out. But you're going to feel bad afterwards. Glory to God. Amen. Might not be right afterwards, but it's going to catch up with you. Amen. Because your feelings are intact. Right there. Not, not, not. Your awareness has been raised now. Amen. Glory to God. And the more that understanding goes, listen how God's trying to get your understanding to be. Your understanding goes here. You can't. When you're there, you, you feel comfortable doing that stuff. When you go here, you don't feel comfortable doing that stuff. When you go here, now he's stopping you before you even. See, the Holy Spirit don't want to just convict you of sin after you do it. He, he, or, or the word convict the world. He wants to convict you of righteousness. In other words, he want to tell you we don't do that before you even do it. Yeah. But that comes with your understanding. Come on, somebody say, Lord, raise my understanding. Raise my understanding. And he does that through the word. Now, I got some more guns. I ain't rushing through this tonight. Proverbs chapter 3. Turn there real quick. Turn there real quick. Proverbs chapter 3. Amen. Watch what he said. Amen. Glory to God. Proverbs chapter 3. Watch what he said. We know the scripture. This is the vacation Bible school scripture. Yes, it Verse 5. Y'all don't know about the Cape Bible School. Come on now. Come on, see your hand if you know about BBS. <laughs> Amen. Sunday School. BTU. Back to training, y'all don't know about that? Amen. Glory to God. Well, I ain't here to teach you that. Amen. <laughs> five verse 3, verse 5. Come on. What did it say in verse 5? Trust in the Lord with some of your heart. Oh. All of your heart and lean not to your own. Understand. Listen, listen what he said. He said, you have an understanding. But what I don't want you to do, I don't want you leaning on that. I don't want you being supported by that. This is what it means to lean on your own understanding, for instance. It is to rest my weight on, to be held up by. He said, listen, I don't want no part of your life to be held up by how you think. I want how you think to be changed to how I think. Yeah. I want you to take on my mindset for everything. Now, religion ain't going to tell you that. They don't tell you, they don't, they don't want you to do that. They don't want, they don't want you to do that. They, 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 they'll get you, they'll have you walking in your common sense, your own wisdom, sharing opinions, freely. Oh, yeah. Freely. That's just my opinion. Hey, Amen. I didn't want it. I didn't want your opinion. Okay, let's pull it out. Let's look at the scripture real quick. Let's look at the point real quick. Hey, Amen. Glory to God. Hey, Amen. Matter of fact, am I, am I, am I missing a point? Hey, Amen. I, I am. There we go. We'll do it. We'll go backwards. Hey, Amen. Glory to God. Write it down. We can't get on the same. We cannot get on the same page without being in. We cannot get on the same pace without being on the same page. Our understanding has to rise. Come here, Don. Right quick. Come here. Come here. Come here. Right quick. Amen. Glory to God. I want you to stand on this side right here. On, on this side of, of, of the podium. Amen. Glory to God. Now, 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 I want you to take your time. All right. Because when God calls you, this is what God calls you to. He calls you to a walk with Him. Amen. You see that? Yes. So when God gets to step in, amen, you can take your time. This is what God, he called you to walk with him, not for him to walk with you. There are things that God want to do, and your understanding got you lagging behind. Amen. And you saying, God, listen to what you say. I'm going to prove it to you. Because listen to what you're saying. God, show me what you're doing. You will see it if you were in pain. Pace. You would know that. We even wrote a song. We, well, I didn't write it. I didn't put, we didn't write it. Amen. There's even a song that is written said, Lord, if you're going to, if you do it, don't do it. My understanding won't let me sing the song. Come on. <laughs> yes, it is. Because his understanding way up here, and he let you know there's never a time that I want to do something without you. There's never a time that I want to do something. But your understanding got you way back there. And here I am. I got to keep turning around like I'm mean, with you. Please come on. <laughs> I had my uh, nephew uh, with me. We were in Rouse's. And I uh, thank you so much, y'all. You can have a seat. We were in Rouse's. And uh, 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 his name is Lawson. Hey, man, that's my guy. And uh, I'm, tell I'm talking about Lawson. I'm telling y'all, I mean, Lawson, is, he's active. He's in the store. He's doing basketball moves and everything. And, and, and I kept telling him, I said, Lawson, come on, man. Catch up, bro. Come on, let's go. Let's go. I'm going to take a few. Lawson, come on, man. Catch up. And this is what he did. He put his hands in his pocket and he just started walking fast. <laughs> like, I'm going to finish show Uncle Johnny. And I'm talking about, he just walked fast, too. He put his hands in his pocket. Turn around and said, Uncle Johnny, you going to keep up? I said, Lawson, I'm the one with the money. <laughs> I 
Say, that was God is saying. See, that's how we try to do. We either, we, we, either, we either walking behind the will of the, the Lord for our life, or we're trying to get in front of the will of the, the Lord for our life. And God said, I want you to be in harmony with me. I want you to walk in sync with me. I want you to function. I want you to be my body. Your head don't make it somewhere that you, before your body do. And he said, listen, I want my head, the Christ and his body, to arrive together. To operate together, to be in sync and to be in harmony. Somebody say amen. amen. Come on, read that point back to me to read. Let me prove it to you. Turn to Amos chapter 3. Turn that real quick. Now, I told you I had a number of scriptures to go to, right? Y'all still with me right now, huh? Yes. Amen. Amos, Amos, Amos. Amen. Glory to God. Is this good? Yes. Will it be good and good? Yes. Good and good. Amen. Hey Amen. Big ain't gonna be able to talk like that when I get on TV. Good ain't good. Hey Amen. Knowing me, I'm pro I probably, I probably like this. Good ain't good. They gonna be like that preacher. Good ain't good. Amos <laughs> hey, three. Amos hey, three. You gotta say I got it, Bishop. What 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 first three? What first three? We know this scripture. We quote this scripture. Come on, read it real loud with me. It reads: Can two walk together except they be agreed? Come on, raise your hand if you knew that scripture. Amen. Glory to God. You heard that. Two can't walk together except they agree. Amen. Yes. All right. Glory to God. Now, let me break this down. This is how our understanding looks with this scripture toy. We always understand it as this. God is talking about two people can't walk together yeah. unless they agree. That's not what this scripture is talking about. Now, that applies to two people. We always like to bring this up with husband and wife. And that, apply, that can apply to husband and wife. But that's not the context of this scripture. God is not talking about me and Felicia walking together by agreeing. That's not what God is talking about. It works. It applies, but that's not the context of this scripture. He's not talking about Felicia. Come on now. He's not talking about John together. He's not talking about how me and you can get along. You want me to prove it? Come on now. Okay. Glory to God. I'm glad you asked. Let's go back to some scripture. I'm going to read out the New Living Translation. You can see it. Watch what it says in verse 1. Listen to this message that the Lord has spoken against you. O people of Israel, against the entire family, I rescued Eve. I rescued you from Egypt. Excuse me. Glory to God. But that's how I'm going to say something. I rescued from Egypt. From among all the families on the earth, I have been intimate with you alone. Come on. So this whole thing that God is talking about, how can the two walk except they agree to it? He's not talking about you two. He's saying this here. I want you to walk with me. And we can't walk until we get on the same page. All this time, God was trying to tell you, I want to walk, I want you to walk with me. But you're not on the same page, so therefore we're not on the same page. What if you are years behind on the stuff God wanted to do in your life? Amen. But don't worry, don't worry. If you are years behind on what God wanted to do in your life, he'll restore the year that the locusts have eaten the canker worm, the hunger worm. He'll, he'll restore your time, amen, glory to God. I like God, he'll restore your time, amen, to catch you up. But don't have him to, have to keep pulling out that restoring the years every year because you keep lagging behind. Yeah. Watch this. Watch what it say. Now we're going to skip down. We're going to skip down. Verse 3. Can two people walk together without agreeing in one direction? Read verse 7 out loud and it reads. Indeed. Read it real loud. Indeed. The sovereign Lord never does anything until he reveals his plan to his servants, the prophets. Well, I thought the scripture, I thought the song said that, Lord, if you're going to do something, don't do it without me. That scripture, what would it just say? The sovereign Lord never does anything. Amen. Come on. <clears throat> never. Come on this side and see it. Yes, sir. Never. <laughs> never. Never, baby. Never. Never. This is what God said. I never want to do something without you. But I, I have to use other people who are in pace. And they are only in pace because they're on the page. I want to use you, but your understanding make you unavailable. Before there were cell phones, there was all that was all that was all in the house phone, amen. And if you grew up in a house with siblings, amen, glory to God. Small wars have been started over that, that house phone. 
Amen. Glory to God. I mean, I had an older brother. Amen. Glory to God. And I'm talking about he thought he was smooth. He just want to be on the phone all the time. Amen. Come on, bro. You got to get off that phone, man. Especially before Carl Wayne showed up. Yeah. <laughs> I need to hear somebody beeping. Hey, come on, bro. Get off that phone. I got somebody calling me now. I got to get that. Ma, he been on the phone. Amen. But well, that wasn't me. I apologize. That wasn't me. I wasn't calling. I wasn't a son that was calling for Ma. Amen. We were going to fight for that phone. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. You got to get off that phone, man. You, got, you see that? And, and if you didn't want, if you, if you didn't want to be bothered, there was a way you do not disturb. You take it off the hook. Yes, sir. Y'all yes, remember them days? Yes, God is saying this here. I've been calling you, but you the phone off the hook. Yes. Your understanding have you unavailable. Mm -hmm. Can't reach you. Want to use you. Want to do it in your life. Want to use you to be my vessel, my body, my representative. I, I want to use you, but I can't use you because your understanding makes you unavailable. Mm -hmm. And I know what you're saying. I know what you're saying. I know what you're saying. I can hear it. But he used a donkey. <laughs> well, I tell you what, my faith won't let me put me in, won't, won't let me be in the same category of a donkey. Well, yeah, he used a donkey and he used a rooster too. Yes, sir. But I'm not a donkey or a rooster. <laughs> and he's not. This is all he did with the rooster: crow and repentance took place. Well, if you satisfied with crow. If you satisfy with a donkey, I mean, go on to God. No, I am a believer. I am a son of God. And there's much more that God want to do in the earth through me. But I got to make myself available by allowing him to teach the word. Can I teach this a little bit, y'all? Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Let's go, let's go to some examples right quick. I'm going to go to some examples of not being on the same page. Some examples of not being on the same page. Amen. Glory to God. Now, now hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. I, got, I got to bring this out. And I'll bring it out right now. Genesis chapter 12. Turn it, turn it. Turn that. Some examples of being on a not, not being on the same page. Because because you you I'm still building a foundation. It's usually known during uh, 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 part three, four, five, some of them where we get actually get lift off. We're still laying the uh, runway right now, see. Amen. Glory to God. Watch this. Watch this. Genesis chapter chapter twelve, what I said, huh? Yes, sir. You got verse one? Mm -hmm. Watch verse one. Now the Lord has said unto Abram. Get thee out of the country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show thee. Watch this. And I will make thee a great nation. He's talking about giving them kids right there. Yes, sir. I will bless thee. I will make thy name great and thou shalt be a blessing. Listen, he said, I'll make you a great nation. From your loins will come a whole nation. Here's the problem. Abraham is already old when he got this word. So you know he's been trying. And they don't have no kids. So go to chapter 15 real quick. Chapter 15. Chapter 16, excuse me. Chapter 16. Turn it real quick. You got it? Now God said I'm going to give you some kids, right? Come on, did he say that? Yes, sir. Amen, glory to God. Watch verse 1. Now Sarah, Abraham's wife, bare him no children. And she had a handmaid, an Egyptian, whose name was Hagar. And Sarah said unto Abram, Behold, now the Lord has restrained me from bearing. I pray thee, go in unto my, to my maid. It may be that I may obtain children by her. And Abram hearkened to the voice of Sarah. And Sarah, Abraham's wife, took Hagar, her maid Egyptian, after Abraham had dwelt 10 years in the land of Canaan and gave her to her husband because all understanding was thinking, well, maybe God meant you were going to have a child by her. Amen. After all, he did say you were going to have a child. He never said I was going to give you one. Come on now. Do you see how understanding is all? Yeah. God, God is saying one thing, but understanding of that thing is way over here. Yeah. Come on, say, Lord, fix my understanding. Lord, fix my understanding. And watch this. And because they would not wait to allow God to operate on their thinking, they rushed into something right there. They rushed into something right there that caused them to give birth to a problem that they no longer wanted. Yeah. I'm not saying the child was a problem. The problem came in with two baby mamas in one house. Come on. That's a problem. That's a problem. <laughs> All right. If you don't think a problem, leave that alone, man. Amen. I believe I can balance that. Amen. No, I can't. Proverbs 13. Look at the first lady over here. No, you won't. That's what she said. Do you see that example of the understanding not being on the same page? Yes, sir. 
Amen. Don't be one of those believers where God is saying something and you thinking it's something else. Coming up with your own interpretation of it. Amen. Come on, Proverbs 13. Watch what it says, verse 22. Real quick. We're moving real quick. Verse 22, watch what it says. Read it out loud with me. A good man leaveth an inheritance to his children's children. And the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. Now listen, what our understanding is of this scripture. We're always saying that God, because I'm a believer, God will cause a great transfer to take place from the ungodly, from the world, to be transferred to me. All I got to do is be saved. All right. Partially true because your inheritance is in Christ. But that ain't what this scripture is saying. <laughs> Somebody say, fix my understanding. Fix my understanding. Let me give you, let me give you the, Hebrew, the Hebrew word for sinner. He said the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. The word sinner comes from the Hebrew word child. C-H-A-T-A, child. This is what it means. Listen, listen, listen what it means. Child, sinner. You ready? Yes. First definition for child, irresponsible. <laughs> irresponsible. That word sin is the Hebrew word child, which means irresponsible. The next definition for child is this lacking courage, preparation, or discipline. Lacking courage, preparation, or discipline. Watch how our understanding is off on the scripture now. Lacking courage, preparation, or discipline. Y'all got it? All right, so now let's read the scripture with the proper definition of it. And this is what it would say, verse 22. A good man will leave an inheritance to his children and children. But the wealth of the one that is irresponsible, that don't have the courage, the preparation, or the discipline, is going to give over his wealth to the one that will. All this stuff, now hold up, that has to fix our understanding. Because we've been thinking this, all I got to do is be saved. And you got saved broke people. With the wrong interpretation of this scripture, the wrong understanding of this scripture. So now they're not doing anything else. What this scripture is saying is here, if you don't learn how to use your gifts, so work the principle, and then apply discipline to your own life, then what you have is going to be transferred to somebody else. You will actually become the one in the scripture that is talking about other people getting your stuff. Fix my understanding, Lord. Amen. Turn to Isaiah 55. Turn that. Getting on the same page. Amen. Getting on the same page. Amen. Amen. How did it start off? How did this song start off? Amen. Uh, Beverly Hillbillies. How did it start off? <laughs> Beverly Hillbillies. By a man named Jay. Yes. Beverly <laughs> kept his family fed. Keep going. Yeah, you know, bubbling crew. Oh, that is black gold, Texas tea. Now, the first thing you know, oh, Jay's a millionaire. You can't folks say, Jay, move away from here. He said, California is the place you ought to be. So he loaded up the truck and he moved to Beverly. Hill, that is. Swimming pool, moving stuff. Y'all remember that right there? Amen. Amen. You will be just like this. I'm talking about abundance. Don't worry. They had it. They had the abundance. But they, I'm talking about, they just made a fool of themselves. I mean, a fool is a harsh term. They made a clown of themselves in Beverly Hills with their West Virginia ways. They were raised to a place and they didn't bring that thinking with them. So because there was no change, and they brought that thinking with them, because there was no change of mind, they were acting like, so you see what I'm saying? And you might be saying, well, they just had so much money, it didn't, cap, it didn't matter. Amen. Well, I mean, if, if they don't change their mind, they're going to end up losing the money. Yeah. Glory to God. I there 55. Y'all looking like, where you got that song from? I don't know why I told the ghost about that money. I saw it clear as day. Isaiah 55, verse 8. Verse 8. Verse 8. Come on, I got a few minutes. Come on. Can I, can I teach you for a few more minutes? Yes, sir. Watch verse 8. Watch what it says. Read it out loud with me to read. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. Amen. Now listen, we're not on the same page. Because we've been quoting this scripture, and that's what we bring up when we don't understand something. First thing we bring up, 
Well, you know, the Lord weighs his thoughts are not our thoughts, and his ways are higher than our ways. Come on, raise your hand if you said that before, amen. amen. You didn't even know that that part of the scripture wasn't even talking about you. Amen. Come on now. You want me to prove it? Yes, sir. Now, when I say, do you want me to prove it, you're supposed to shout back. Prove it. Now, let nobody teach you nothing they can't prove. Do you want me to prove it? Prove it. Go to verse 1 then. Chapter 55, verse 1. Watch what it says. Ho, oh, everyone that is thirsty, come ye to the waters. And he that had no money, come ye, buy and eat. Yea, come buy wine and milk without money and price. How do you buy something without money or without price? Because somebody already paid for it. It's an invitation. It's an invitation to come into relationship with God. Now let's get down to verse 6. Watch verse 6. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked. Let who? Do what? Forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Now he let me know who he's talking to. The wicked and the unrighteous. Well, here's the problem. I'm not neither one of them. Come on. I have been made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. That's what the words say, right? So now I'm running around talking about, well, you know, his ways are higher than my ways and his thoughts are higher than my thoughts. And God said, I wasn't talking to you. I was talking to the one that ain't saved, that don't have the mind of Christ, that had not been in the word, that had not been cleansed by the blood, that ain't filled with the spirit. That's who I was talking to. I was trying to get them to come and I was pointing out the way you think and the way you act is not where I am. Okay, let me, let me try to prove it. Let the wicked forsake his way, let the unrighteous man his thoughts, and let him return unto the Lord, for he will have mercy upon him and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. Then he goes into verse 8, and he says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, and we know yours the wicked and the unrighteous. And my ways are not your ways, says the Lord. For the heavens are higher. For well, as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. Verse 10 is still a part of this scripture. And verse 10 said, for as the rain comes down. Come on, say water coming down. Water. And the snow from heaven and return not there. But watch what it does. It waters the earth and make it bring forth in bud. That it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. Watch verse 11. So shall my word be that go forth out of my mouth. So he says, so shall my word be. What do you mean by so shall my word be? This is what he means. My word will be like the rain. What did the rain do? When I did what the rain did. The rain came down, watered the earth, made the grass grow up. The rain came down, watered the earth, made the grass grow. The scripture said, it make it good. Grass ain't got a choice now. The rain came down, watered the earth, made the plants grow. You get it? Then he said, my word going to be like the rain. The word going to come down, water your spirit, make your understanding grow. Listen, listen. My ways are not your ways. My thoughts are not your thoughts, but don't worry. As the rain do the earth, so shall my word do you. It will water you and make you grow. Glory to God. See, watch it. It will water you where you at and make you. You want me to, want me to prove it some more? Yes, sir. Prove it. Okay. I'll prove it. I'll prove it. Turn, turn real quick. Isaiah chapter 2. Turn it real quick. I'll prove it. I know what you think. I know what you think. His ways are higher than our ways. Because you be walking around with this shit. Nobody can have the mind, the thoughts of God. And nobody can have the ways of God. Amen. Amen. Stay, stay right there. Keep that same energy when you read the next scripture. Amen. Watch what it says. Watch what it says. Verse 3. You got it? Watch what it says in verse 3. And many people shall go and say, Come ye, let us go to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob. And he will teach us his ways. And we will walk in his path. I thought God said he wants us to have his way. I thought he said his way was higher than our ways. And why he want to teach me his way? Watch what he say in the New Living Translation. Watch it. Read it with me and it reads. People from many nations will come and say, Come, let us go up to heaven and hope. <laughs> well, look what it said. It said right there. 
Let them go to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of God, Jacob's God. Yeah. Is this the house of the Lord? Yes, sir. Amen. This is what it says. People will come from many nations, will come and say, let us go to heaven now. Let us go to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of Jacob's God. Watch this. There he will teach us his ways, and we will walk in his path. For the Lord's teaching will go from Zion, go out from Zion, or heaven and hope. His word will go out from Jerusalem. Listen to what God said. The reason I need you to get to the house of the Lord is so that you can get some water on you. So the word can begin to raise your understanding, Mr. Church. Because when, when the word raises your understanding, then you can get in pace with me because you're on the page with me. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Ooh, that's good right there. Amen. Amen. He's saying that I... And going to cause your understanding to rise the same way the rain does the grass. Our last scripture, Second Timothy chapter two. Has this been good to you? Yes, sir. Now, what was I trying to do tonight with this message? I, I, I wasn't. Well, Bishop, I didn't. I, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't shout. I didn't fall out. Amen. I remember Kenneth Hagin was uh, preaching. A uh, story Kenneth Hagin was preaching. And um, Kenneth Hagin said he was preaching. He went to this church in East Texas and he was preaching. And he, he was doing, he was doing uh, um, a number of nights. Kenneth Hagin wouldn't take a date, excuse me, a preaching engagement unless he can have, if he wanted to do a revival or something, he'd have to have at least eight nights. I need eight days to do what I'm going to do. It's a lot of ground I got to dig up on, and I got to lay the right foundation. And before we can see the manifestations of many signs and wonders in an awesome way, we can see some sprinkled throughout the crowd. But if we want God to move in a mighty way, I need time to plow the right understanding into the mind of the move. But well, we say he over there, and he over there on his uh, first night, and he preached. And as soon as he started preaching, this brother jumped up and took off running. Glory! And he was just, yeah, 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 yeah. As soon as he started preaching. So we kind of let him calm down after that and everything. And he started preaching. Next night, brothers jumped up and started yelling. Oh, as soon as he started preaching, brothers jumped up and started running. Just take off. So he said, third night, uh, we got up to preach and, and he got good in the message. And the brother jumped up and started yelling glory. So Kenneth Hagin yelled out to the brother, brother, if you're paying your tithes and your offerings, keep running. Okay. And he stopped. <laughs> Now, now, what was he doing? He was, he, was, he was trying to deal with that distraction. But that's the Holy Ghost. We just take off running like that. Amen. Until your understanding say that the spirit of the prophet. See, 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 now I'm saying that. See, we would have thought there was a mighty move of God. That brother took off running. Amen. Yeah. But there's a better, a, a mightier move of God that takes place when he's able to get the understanding that you have and give you his. So you can get on the same page so you can get in pace. All right, don't worry. I ain't going to get time. All right, here we go. 2 Timothy, chapter 2. I was just talking to you back there. Come on, Tim. Come. Verse 15. Well, can you hear me? Oh, Never mind. Verse 15. Verse 15. You got to say, I got it. Got it. Read it out loud with me and read Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that need not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. You see it? If you don't have it, say, wait on me. Okay, let me say it one more time. This is what it says. Study to prove to others on Facebook. No. A workman. No. The scripture don't say study to prove. No, it says show yourself. It says study to show yourself approved. Yes, See, we got approved and proven wrong. Yes, you don't study to be able to hold your ground in the base. Come on. You don't study to show other people. Right? The scripture doesn't say I'm showing nobody else nothing. It says that I'm studying to show myself approved unto God. I don't want other people to think that I'm all that. No, watch, watch, watch. The word approved comes from the Greek word uh, dogmos, D O K I M O S. And this is what it means it means tried, it means acceptable, and it also means concordance. That word concordance means harmony or agreement. Study to show yourself approved to be in harmony with God. 
That's the reason I study. I, re I study so that my understanding can be raised and I can walk in harmony with the Lord. Amen. Glory to God. Some of them stop Amen. Glory to God. That's what God is trying to get us to. Somebody say, get me on the same page, Lord. He can't do it if he can't get you in the Bible. He can't get you on the same page if he can't get you to church. He can't get you on the same page if he can't get you to Bible study. He can't get you on the same page if he can't get you to take notes. He can't get you on the same page if he can't get you to spend time in prayer. All of that is saying, God is saying, now I'm going to do something mighty in this ministry. I'm going to use you all in a mighty way. And it won't be the way that you think I am. It won't be so that everybody can pile into this place. It's going to be so everybody in this place can pile out of the door. I am going to sing you as your understanding is raised. I'm going to sing you the places that you didn't even know you were going. Some of you had visions of the things that, and words from the Lord that said, I'm going to use you in this way. And you think that you've been waiting on God. God has said, no, the understanding you had was the phone that was off the hook. And I couldn't use you with that thinking. But now that I'm, I got you on the operating table and I'm going to work on your way of thinking, now you're going to be in line and in sync with me. And I'm going to bring you up to speed and you'll be able to walk in pace because you'll be on the same page. The very thoughts of the Father flowing through you. Jesus said it this way. He said, I don't do anything but what I see the Father do. I don't say anything but what I hear the Father say. I'm in sync with the Father. I'm a representation of the Father. And that's what God is doing in this ministry. Not for people to come in, but to send people. They're coming. They're coming in. They're coming in. But they're not coming in until we go out. Glory to God. Come on, give God some praise. I'll stop right there. Thank you.